On April 28th, join us after the worship service for a delicious meal and great fellowship in support of our pastor and the Focus 2024 campaign. The menu includes turkey sausage, bacon, shrimp and grits, quiche, biscuits, sweet rolls, and much more. The cost of the breakfast is $35 per person. Kids, toddlers through 12th grade eat free. You can purchase tickets on the church website. Remember to write campaign breakfast in the memo section. You may also purchase tickets in the foyer after the worship service. If you have any questions, please contact any member of the Focus 2024 Campaign Committee. Janice Pye, Shaquita McKenzie, Alzina Smith, Rubazine Whitlow, Sylvia Hawkins, Diane Moore, or Alan Lavender. We hope to see you there. Bible study will not meet on Tuesday, April 2nd or Wednesday, April 3rd. We will resume our studies on Tuesday, April 9th and Wednesday, April 10th. Have a blessed Holy Week and spring break. The quarterly conference meeting will be on Monday, April 8th at 6 p.m. This meeting will be held at the church and facilitated by our presiding elder, Reverend Larry Hudson. The meeting is open to all Allen Temple members, officers, and ministry. Presidents are encouraged to attend as well. The Allen Temple Lay Ministry invites you to attend Sacred Speech Seminars hosted by the Connectional Lay Organization. These seminars' purposes to enhance the engagement and interaction of congregation during the preaching or teaching experience. There are three one-hour seminars remaining over the next three months. Please tune in to broaden your understanding of effectively delivering and responding to God's Word. Links are provided in the e-bulletin. The nursery is available on Sundays during the worship service for children aged one to five years old. Kindergartners will also attend Children's Church. Our nursery team is eagerly waiting to serve your little ones. We're located in the four-year area. If you have any questions or needs, please contact Sister Cousin at C-A-R-I-S-A-L-Y-N 75 at AOL.com. Did you know that reading the Bible cover to cover can be increasingly beneficial and can enrich your life in many ways? Reading the entire Bible can deepen your relationship with God and expand your knowledge of Him. You can experience the complete plan of salvation from Genesis to Revelation and discern how God is leading you today. To assist in your commitment to reading the entire Bible in 2024, beginning Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, a daily reading plan will be developed through the e-bulletin. Here's something to think about. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Join an Allen Temple Fellowship Group, where you'll come together monthly with other members to fellowship, laugh, and encourage each other. If you would like to join a group or want more information, please complete a fellowship group form by clicking the link in your e-bulletin or signing up at the Allen Temple webpage. These are today's featured announcements. Have a wonderfully blessed week. Greetings. My name is Dr. Joseph N. Cousins, Sr., the pastor here at Allen Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church, bringing you greetings and thanking you for coming to be with us this day. Whether you're worshiping with us in person or whether you're worshiping with us virtually, we're glad that God led you here today to be with us. Here at Allen Temple, we pride ourselves on being the church that's at your service. For we believe that God gives us four basic principles to teach, to go, to serve, and to grow that allow us to be of service to God's kingdom. First of all, we teach because we believe the Bible shows us that we must study to show ourselves approved, being those that are not ashamed to be able to effectively divide the word of truth. We go because as Jesus sent out uh, his disciples, Jesus sends out each and every one of us to go and to make disciples that the kingdom of God might continue to be edified. We serve because we believe that Jesus, who is God and the Son of God, did not come to be served, but came to serve, and so we should serve. And finally, we grow. When we do all the other things, when we teach, when we go, and when we serve, God will allow us to grow because each day God will add to the number of those that are celebrating and fellowshipping here with us at Allen Temple. 
And we have evidence of that because you are part of that number today. And we pray that God would lead you to come on and join us and be a part of the ministry here at Allen Temple. But until that time, enjoy yourself, celebrate with us. And again, we thank you for stopping by Allen Temple AME Church of Woodstock, Georgia, the church that's at your service. to the Lord this morning, everybody. Yeah. Won't you stand on your feet and worship with us this morning? Won't you pray with us this morning? Let your heart be glad this morning that guess what? He is risen. Yeah. He is risen this morning. Oh, thank you, God, for Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts. We are so grateful that you left us enough to die for us, Lord. We are grateful that we don't know where we would be if you didn't love us like you loved us. We are grateful that we are living to see another resurrection Sunday.
say I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek thy good
Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, we love your habitation. We love the place where your honor dwells. Let the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and all the earth sing his praises. You may be seated. And we will now sing the praises of the Lord as we bless the Lord for our choir today. Come on, let's give God some praise for our choir and our music ministry as we sing praises unto the Lord. in worship on this Easter Sunday morning. Want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank you uh, for coming out. Uh, for those that are watching us virtually, we thank you. And of course, for those who came out uh, to worship with us today physically, we thank you, thank you, thank you very much, especially if you are uh, a first time visitor here at Allen Temple. We thank you for coming out. We thank you for thinking about us today. We thank you for coming to worship with us today. I uh, hope you come back again, hope you enjoy yourself, and hope this is a marvelous, marvelous opportunity. Uh, we're just blessed to have you and blessed to be here today. Uh, in the spirit of Jesus rising for us that we might have life and have life everlasting, we praise the Lord that you got up this morning to come out and to celebrate the Lord with us today. I have two uh, 
brief announcements. First of all, Reverend Reed is going to come and give us some information about the most important thing uh, for some people today, and that is the Easter egg hunt. So here is Reverend Reed. <laughs> Good morning. Our annual Easter egg hunt will take place immediately after church service today. If your child is between the ages of one to five, they'll be hunting over here to the left, to my left, in, near the handicap area. If your child is in the age of six through 10 or 11, and I'm, I'm gonna leave that up to you, they will be um, hunting in this area. If your child is a uh, middle schooler or higher, you will see Mr. Julian over here. Wave your hand, Mr. Julian. He has his own little special thing today. And the nursery is open today for any children ages one through five. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Reverend Latanya. And the nursery is, um, for those that may be visiting or those that don't know, the nursery is going out of the main entrance of the church. It's the door right to your left. Uh, it's the first door you'll come on, it's open. And again, any children uh, up to age five are welcome in the nursery. Sister Cousin and Jojo are in there today, along with Alex, making sure that everything is good for you today. So please feel free to drop your kids off and know that they are in safe hands. Um, now we have a special announcement also from Sister Shaquita McKenzie. Come on, let's give God some praise for Sister Shaquita. Thank you. Good morning, Alan Temple. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I stand before you on behalf of our Pastors Focus Campaign Committee. As many of you know, our pastor is running for bishop. Act like you know this morning, amen. We've been on this campaign trail, what, pastor, for about two, two and a half years? A long time. We have 143 days left. And I don't know who's more excited, me or you, Pastor, because I'm tired. Both of us. If I'm tired, I can only imagine what it's like for him. As many of you know, our pastor is on the road on a weekly basis, traveling sometimes to two, one or two cities. With that being said, how can you help? I know we've done several fundraisings, uh, fundraisers where we are helping him along the way. Where here is something that you all can participate in, even our little ones. How many of you right now have a gift card stuffed in your wallet or your purse that you forgot? When I clean out my purse, I have more gift cards fall out than I do change. So with that being said, starting for the month of April, we are going to do a gift card drive for our pastor. Right outside in the foyer by the sign, there will be a box. I don't care if you have $5 on that gift card, if you used it, or if you just want to go in the store and get a five or ten dollar gift card, we want to, our pastor has to eat on the road, he has to have gas, he has to have snacks, all of those things. So whether it's a Kroger gift card, a Chick-fil-A gift card, a gas card, whatever that is, please, please ma'am, please sirs, little ones, bless our pastor by simply just dropping that gift card in that box. Even if you've used the gift card but you know it's a couple of dollars left on there, drop it in there. That'll get him a nice diet, diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> also, all of us travel at some point, even if you just travel downtown and do a staycation. I'm sure many of you have points. Did you know you can transfer your points? So even, you don't have to use them all. If you just transfer points to our pastor, whether it's 1,000 points, 2,000 points, and so, it would be nice if we could transfer enough Delta miles that he didn't have to drive to his destination. He could just simply fly. Do you know how much time that would save him on the road, just jumping on a flight and going to a destination that he may have to drive eight hours to? Those points will add up. So with next Sunday on the screen, we will have how you can transfer those points to him. They could be Marriott, he loves the Marriott. However, he's not opposed to the Hilton or any other major point brand. Last thing. If you work for one of these organizations and you have a family and friends discount, add your pastor to that because I'm telling you, that's how I travel. I have a Hilton family and friends discount and I don't ever pay full price when I stay somewhere as a result of that. So anything that you can do, please, please, ma'am, please, sirs, help our pastor out. And if you can't do anything else, just continue to pray for him and his family. Thank you. 
Amen. Sweet. I know that's right. Um, so look, uh, Shaquita didn't grab my phone. So look, I, I thank everybody. And let's give God some praise for Sister McKenzie again. Um, and, it's, and especially for those uh, who don't know and those who are visiting with us today. As Sister McKenzie stated, I am aspiring to be a bishop in our church. In the African Methodist Episcopal Church, we have uh, bishops in our church who serve in an administrative capacity who, as the Bible says, oversee pastors and oversee churches. And in our denomination, it, this is an elected position in which you actually campaign for, you run for. There are about uh, 1,800 delegates that will be gathering in Columbus, Ohio in August uh, for the election. And one of the things that we must do as those who run or aspire to be bishop, you do go different places, you do campaign, just any, like any other campaign, if you're running for something, we have to travel, we have to be seen. Um, and I thank her and I thank all of you so very much just this week alone, and she's correct. I'll be heading to Savannah on Tuesday, I'll be heading to Birmingham, Alabama on Wednesday, I'll be heading to Memphis, Tennessee, uh, on Friday, and that's just this week alone. Then next week I'll be uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas, and then the list just goes on and on up through August. So anything you can do would be very helpful uh, because truly it's just appreciative. I'm appreciative of it, Sister Cousins appreciative of it, all of us are, and we thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for all that you do. And also, uh, especially those who are visiting today and those uh, members as well, if you have not signed up for our uh, constant contact communication. You can do it right from our website, allentempleame.org, and you'll be able to see how to sign up for constant contact. Every Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning, an electronic newsletter goes out letting you know everything that's going on in the church so you'll know exactly what's happening. You'll know the upcoming events, and you'll be able to plan accordingly, and we'll know exactly what's going on in our church. So we praise and thank the Lord for everyone um, this very day. Matter of fact, uh, we haven't done this in a while. We don't do this uh, as often as we should. Uh, you know, it, it was funny, and Brother Victor said this, four years ago, I was telling my wife this this morning, four years ago uh, on Easter, it, the sanctuary was empty. Uh, most sanctuaries, not all, but most across the, the world were empty on that Easter Sunday morning because we were suffering from the effects of COVID-19 coronavirus, but here we are gathered four years later, church full, praising and celebrating the name of the Lord, and we ought to thank and praise God for that. Um, one of the things that got lost in translation um, is the, the fellowship amongst each other. It's one of the things that we missed out on, that we got lost in, simply because of the fact that we were apart for so long. And, and even down to uh, letting first time visitors know we're excited that you're here and we are so excited you're here. And I wanna thank uh, Brother Patton, Brother Mike Patton for, no, the other day Brother Patton said to me, our, our vice chair of our trustee board said, Pastor, you know, we ought to be able to lift up those uh, first time visitors, especially that come out to church. I'm not gonna ask you to stand, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand. We just wanna let you know we're glad that you are here. But one of the things that we are very glad you are here, everyone, but we're glad you're here. Um, and, and one of the things that I want to take a moment to do today, and um, our, our band, our, our, they know what to do during this time. Let's just take about a minute or two, and you can stay in your section, you can stay in your area, but let's bring back something we haven't done in a long time. Just stand wherever you are, greet somebody, let them know Happy Easter. I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. You don't have to go far from where you are, but just right around your area, take a moment, greet, gather, fellowship, praise, and celebrate the name of the Lord, just for a moment or two, to let the world know we're glad we came out this morning to see about a risen Savior.
you know, there, there are some effects of um, COVID-19, coronavirus, and as, as we stand here even four or five years later, that uh, still will affect the church forever. But one thing that it cannot affect and one thing that it should not affect is our gathering together, our fellowship, uh, our touching and agreeing, and most of all, our celebrating the Lord together, not through uh, a video screen, and there's nothing wrong with that, but not through a video screen, but through actually coming out into the house of the Lord to celebrate with one another, to witness um, just the joy of uh, corporate worship and the joy that we have in thanking God for letting us see another day. So my sisters and brothers, as we transition, come on, let's give God some praise. It's offering time. It's our time to give to God that which belongs to God. If we could place our giving information on the screen. Um, and I tell you this, one thing that I know uh, for a fact, I could not do this without you. Uh, last week, we were blessed. We hosted a Palm Sunday uh, celebration for our presiding elder. Bishop uh, A.J. Richardson Richardson was here, preached a dynamic word. Our own bishop, Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, was here. Presiding Elder Larry Hudson, who organized the whole event, he was here. We had a marvelous time last week. And um, I thank you so much for showing up and showing out uh, Allen Temple and being here last week as we welcomed our guests and as we welcomed the bishops and had a marvelous time. And you just continue to always show up and show out. And I could not do this work without you. I would not want to do this work without you. And we need you not just in the giving of your time and of your talents, which you do so much. We also uh, need the giving of that which is our treasure. Because the Bible says that God requires and asks us to give 10% back to God from the 100% that God gives to us. And in that tithe, we believe that God has given us abundantly more than we deserve and even abundantly more than we could even ever ask for, hope, or wish. And from that abundance, we give God back as God asks 10% in the form of a tithe. And here at Allen Temple, we have these various ways in which we give to God that which belongs to God. You'll see to uh, my left on the screen I'm looking at, you'll see the picture of the church and you'll see above it, Vanco. Vanco is basically our online giving engine. Um, and just to clarify, last week a friend of mine visited, a couple weeks ago actually he visited, and he said, um, I didn't see y'all pass the basket. I didn't see y'all walk around the table. Um, that's another thing that happened since uh, COVID. There's, we don't pass the basket any longer. We don't walk around the table any longer. Uh, but still, persons have been diligent in what they give to God simply because it is what God asks us to do. So this is our passing the basket. This is our walking around the table. This is our time of giving. And you'll see on the screen Vanco. Vanco is the online giving engine that's used uh, at our church website, allentempleame.org. When you go there, you'll be able to give in uh, whatever way you desire. You'll be able to specify where you would like your gift to be used or where you request that it be used by the church at Vanco. Next to it, you'll see Givelify. Givelify can be found on our church website. Also, you can give through givelify.com, and there's an app. I know in the Apple store, and I'm pretty sure in the Android store, that says Givelify. Matter of fact, every week I get up here and say that, and I double-checked uh, this week, just this past week, to make sure that it's there. And yes, givelify.com, search Allen Temple AME Woodstock, we show up. Givelify app, search Allen Temple AME Woodstock, we show up. So it's right there and on our webpage. And you'll see that picture, a picture of your church and a picture of your pastor, and you'll know you're in the right place. Uh, you can text to give at 833-523-2053. Set up an account, text an amount, and it's just that easy. Uh, you can give in person. There's still, for those that uh, have that in-person giving that likes to write checks, do I have any check writers in the house? Any check writers? Any people still write checks? Yeah, I still write checks. Nobody else still write checks? Really? Well, I still write them. I, mean, I still write checks. For those that do that, or for those that believe in just giving uh, physically, we have a giving station to the left of uh, the door leading to the sanctuary and to the left of the door right before the nursery leading out of the church. We have those giving stations. You can drop it in in person or you can mail your gifts to 232 Arnold Mill Road, Woodstock, Georgia, 30188. But whatever you do, however you do it, remember to give to God that which belongs to God, especially on the day we celebrate all that God does for us. Jesus comes, Jesus lives, 
Jesus ministers, Jesus heals, Jesus uplifts, Jesus encourages, Jesus is crucified, Jesus dies, but Jesus rises again that we might have life everlasting. And we owe God everything that we have for it all came from God. So this is our opportunity to give to God that which belongs to God. So all across the church, my sisters and brothers, if you will stand wherever you are, all across God's sanctuary, those who are watching us, if you're in a position to stand with us, please do so. If you're not, don't worry about it. Take your gift that you give to God and hold it high to the sky, whatever your gift may be. Mine is electronic, holding my phone high in the sky. Why do I do this? I do this to praise the Lord for having something to give, to praise the Lord in celebration for all that God does for me. And most of all, just to say thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you give me to be a blessing to your kingdom. And we look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for these gifts that you have allowed us to give this day. As we give them, Lord, we ask that you would bless them, that you would multiply them, and that you would distribute them in the building of your kingdom. And in all we do, we shall give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our choir is going to bless us now with two selections. Come on, let's give God some praise again for our choir. And then we will go right, and our music ministry, and we will go right into the word of God. Thank you so very much.
some praise for our choir again our music ministry we praise and we celebrate the name of the Lord for them on this Easter Sunday morning 2024 where we are glad that we are here but we're even more glad that Jesus uh, rose that we might have life and have that life more abundantly uh, if you would just join with me for a word of prayer gracious and everlasting God we thank you especially on this Easter Sunday morning for all that you continue to do for each and every one of us. Now, Lord, we ask that this day you would fully decrease me and fully increase you so that especially on this day, everyone who's here and everyone who views this broadcast would see and hear absolutely none of me and see and hear absolutely all of you. In Jesus' most blessed name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is found in the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew the 28th chapter, Matthew 28, and we are looking at uh, verses 1 through 10, and then we're going to go to verses 16 uh, through 20. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. And then we're going to uh, 16 through 20. It's on the screen, but for those who want to take a moment to find it for yourself, we're going to give you a moment just to find it. Matthew 28, 1 through 10 and 16 through 20. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible, and we find these words. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. And the angel of the Lord spoke to the women and said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there and remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. They ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Jumping down to verse 16, the disciples did as the women uh, said, as Jesus said, they left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, 
some worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I'll be with you even until the end of the age. Uh, for just a few moments today on this Easter Sunday morning, I ask that we would consider this subject, mission accomplished. Uh, in, in life, we have various missions that we must do. And being honest, sometimes we fulfill those missions and sometimes we fail at those missions. Think about some of the things that you've been called to do in your life and missions and things that you were called to do. Some where you were successful and some where you failed. Uh, my, my brother here directing the choir today, doing a great job uh, working with the choir, Brother Freeman, um, we, we believe that the University of North Carolina Tar Heels had a mission. They had a mission. Had a mission. <sighs> Failed it. Amen. Failed it. <laughs> Failed it. And, and I don't see Greg Pace laughing because Arizona failed at their mission too. Amen. <laughs> it hurts when there's a mission that you have to accomplish, but yet instead of finding achievement, you find failure. From the moment Jesus entered the world, Jesus had a mission. From his birth as an infant, we celebrated a couple months ago, Christmas time, um, through his earthly ministry, culminating with his death and resurrection, Jesus had a specific mission. His mission was to be God and come down to the earth in the form of humankind and to bring us, to redeem us, and to bring us back into right relationship with God and to save us from eternal damnation by giving his life for us. And we see here and we celebrate here another Easter Sunday morning celebrating Jesus and we're here celebrating the successful accomplishment of his earthly mission. We're here today with the ability to celebrate simply because Jesus saved us and accomplished his mission. And I know that Jesus has accomplished his mission, but if you would just indulge me for a few moments on this Easter Sunday, I would like to take some time to look at some more specifics in our text, not just dealing with the mission of Jesus, but dealing with some other missions that were going on as well. So our text for today is found in the 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. We read it a moment ago. Just want to uh, reiterate it for you. Early on Sunday morning, two women, uh, two Marys to be exact, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the Mary uh, who was the mother of, uh, they say, James and Joseph, that other Mary, uh, went to visit the tomb of Jesus and suddenly there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down uh, during that earthquake and set and rolled aside and set on the large stone that covered the entrance to the tomb where Jesus was. And there were guards that were guarding the tomb so no one would bother the body of Jesus. And the Bible says when the earthquake came and the stone was rolled aside and the angel said, the guards who were there, placed there by the administration, placed there so nobody would bother Jesus, the guards there fainted into a dead faint as well. The angel told the women in the midst of all this, don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus here, but he's not here anymore. He rose from the dead just like he said he would. And he said, come see where Jesus was lying because he's just not here anymore. And then the women ran, the, the angel continued to talk to the women and told them, now go and run and tell the disciples that Jesus is risen and Jesus wants you to meet him in Galilee. The Bible said that the women ran quickly from the tomb and they were frightened and joyful at the same time. And as they ran from the tomb, Jesus met them along the way. They worshiped Jesus and Jesus said, don't be afraid. Go tell the disciples, tell my brothers to meet me at the place where I told them in Galilee. So the Bible says the disciples left for Galilee just as Jesus said, met Jesus there, found him there. And as they worshiped him, even though there were still some that were doubting, as they worshiped him, Jesus began to outline to them that he had all authority in heaven, all authority in earth. And he said to them, now I'm charging you with the great commissioning. 
I'm charging you with going and making disciples of all nations. I'm charging you with baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm teaching you now to go out and teach them what I've taught you, that we might make new disciples so that thousands of years later, some people may gather in Woodstock, Georgia, on 232 Arnold Mill Road to celebrate what just happened. So today we come celebrating the mission that Jesus accomplished thousands of years ago, but we also celebrate and highlight some other missions that are relevant to us today as well. So if we look at the text, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some missions that have been accomplished on this day. First mission that we see that was accomplished on Easter was uh, the mission of the women. First mission was the mission that was accomplished by the women. Um, we're highlighting this, this mission of women, particularly Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, again, the mother of Mary, uh, the mother of James and Joseph. And it's fitting that we highlight women today, especially because this is the last day of Women's History Month. So it's fitting that we would highlight women today because they were the first ones to go and see about Jesus for themselves. Before anybody else got up, before anybody else did anything, it was the women that went out to see about Jesus for themselves. And if we look around our churches today, even looking around this room today, we wouldn't have a church without women. Church would not survive without the participation and input of our women. And it is the women that are the backbone of our church. Matter of fact, my 91-year-old mother is still working on behalf of God's people, specifically women, advocating and arguing and pushing for there to be equality on all levels and in all places simply because she wants the world to know that women truly matter. And that's the mission that we find. The backbone of our churches, women are. And, and here we see women on this early Sunday morning being the first ones to go out working to accomplish their mission. So we look at our text beginning with that first verse. Bible says early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb to visit Jesus. Now, if we look at some of the other translations and we look at some of the historical context, we'll understand why the women were going out to the tomb of Jesus. They were going to Jesus not just to see about him, but they were going to uh, Jesus because they cared about him enough to say we've got to go and, and prepare uh, the body and, and be able to anoint the body and prepare the body. It wasn't done right. He, he was dragged off that cross on Friday. He wasn't done right. He wasn't done properly. We have to do what we have to do to make sure that we do right by Jesus. So the Bible says as they were traveling, and if you even look at some other translations, you'll find that there was concern because they knew that, that there was no way in the world that, that Pilate wanted there to be any way Jesus could get out of that tomb. So what he did was he rolled a, a, a huge rock in front of the entrance to the tomb where Jesus was. A rock that was so big that it could not have possibly been rolled away by human hands. So the Bible says that there was some concern about what are we going to do about that rock? And then in addition to the rock, there were guards placed outside of the tomb. So there was a rock there and there were guards there. And there was concern saying, well, if we get past the rock, how are we going to get past the guards? And all this stuff was going on simply as they were going to see about Jesus for themselves. And the Bible says as they were traveling, they were concerned about the rock. They were concerned about the guards. But by the time they got there, they found that a great earthquake occurred. And God rolled away the stone that was in the way. God moved the guards and allowed them to go into a dead faint who were guarding Jesus. And an angel of the Lord sat upon that rock and gave instruction to the women. They were able to accomplish the first part of their mission before they even got there because God made a way out of no way when they didn't know how a way was gonna be made. I really want you to understand today that whatever you're dealing with, all the obstacles and the stuff that we have in our heads that keep us from getting to Jesus and the way God would have us to be, you really ain't got to worry about that stuff because if you look in the word of God, you'll find God has a way of taking care of stuff before you even have to deal with it. And every now and again, you ought to just shout and thank God for the fact. Matter of fact, 
have you ever had a bill that got paid and you don't know how in the world it got paid it had to be God have you ever had a relationship that got repaired you don't know how in the world it got repaired it had to be God have you ever had a situation in your life that was blocking you and holding you back but somehow some way God made a way out of no way allowing you to accomplish your mission so so they did it because uh, God made a way already but then the angel started speaking to him and the angel said you, you thought your mission was to come and anoint the body of Jesus but he ain't here and he said he, he rose just as he said he would and he said now I give you another mission and the mission I give you now is go out and tell the disciples what you saw here today so they left to tell the disciples, and along the way Jesus met them, and Jesus encouraged them, and they went on to tell the disciples, and they were able to accomplish the real mission God had given them for that day. They went there with one mission and found that God already took care of that. But they left there with another mission that God gave them when they went for the first mission. Maybe you don't know why you got up and came to church this morning. Maybe you don't know why in the world you got up. Maybe you got up because you said I hadn't been in a while and it's Easter and I got to go see what's going on. Maybe you got up because you said I feel guilty if I don't just go to church this Sunday morning. Maybe you got up because somebody drug you here. Maybe you got up because you drug somebody here. But I'm here to tell you no matter what you came here for, God gives you a new initiative on your way out. God said you might have come here for one reason, but I'm going to let you leave for another reason. So regardless of why you came here, when we leave this place, we ought to leave like the women did and go and tell the world about this Jesus who knows all about our sins, about this Jesus who died that we might have life, and about this Jesus who always accomplishes his missions. If we're being honest, the mission of the women was accomplished when they were able not just to get to Jesus but go and, and tell the disciples about what was going on. So now we come to the mission of the disciples. We see the mission of the women but now what's the mission of uh, the disciples? Well the, the women were able to see Jesus for themselves and then they went out and told the disciples about Jesus and, and now it's up to the disciples to do what God tells them to do. And, and I like the disciples because you can find yourself in one disciple. There ought to be at least one disciple you can find yourself in. The one I tend to find myself in, for those that know me, is Peter. I, I, I find Peter because it's, it's, it's a part of me that if you catch me on the wrong day, I may have to apologize to you a few days later, amen, for what was said on that wrong day. And, and, and I find myself in, in Peter, and, and I find uh, uh, that, that principle in me. And if you look at those 12, you can find yourself somewhere in that group. It was a ragtag group called to follow Jesus. Some, some fishermen, some, some who did taxes, some who did all kind of manner of work. They just followed Jesus simply because Jesus says, come follow me. And these men were not perfect. Not a single one was perfect. Matter of fact, one of them denied him. One of them doubted him. One of them betrayed him. So they were not at all perfect men, but still they were called by Jesus to follow Jesus and to help Jesus achieve his mission. And, and the disciples, in spite of their imperfections, they walked alongside Jesus. They spread his message to the world. They were doing great. The disciples were doing wonderfully. They were able to do things that they never thought they could do because they followed Jesus. But on that Friday, Good Friday, as we call it, when Jesus died on that cross, when Jesus died, the disciples disappeared. Historical records show us that when Jesus died on that cross, the disciples, in, in fear of what would happen to them because of what happened to Jesus, they said, we need to go somewhere and figure this thing out. So, so when Jesus died on, on Good Friday, we find the disciples afraid, hiding, and scared, but God never gave up on them. I need to encourage you today, and this is why I need to encourage you today. I need to encourage you today. Well, I've been pastoring now for 27 years. 
This is my 27th or 28th Easter preaching, uh, Reverend Tammy. And, and I, I learned when, when I first started pastoring, and I wish Sister Cousin was in here. She's in the nursery today. I wish she was in here because she would agree. When I first started pastoring, I, I used to kind of beat up on the people who came on Easter who didn't come any other Sunday. You know, I used to make little jokes and little sly comments and little things because you got a group of people that will come to church on Easter. And this is not here, just here, it's everywhere. Come to church on Easter and won't come other times. But, but I used to beat up on them and I used to say things. Now that I'm older and prayerfully a little bit wiser, I realize this. I'm not here to beat up on those people. I'm here to encourage them. And this is how I'm here to encourage you. And, and if you look at the disciples, the Bible says the disciples were in hiding, but not only did Jesus find them in the midst of their hiding and reach out to them in the midst of their hiding, the Bible says even though they were hiding, God never gave up on them. And I don't care if this is the only time you're going to make it to church this year. I don't care if it's the only time you make it to church this decade. I'm here to tell you on this Sunday morning, the last Sunday in uh, uh, March of, of 2024, Easter Sunday, March 2024, I'm here to tell you this, God has not given up on you. Regardless of what you might be dealing with, God has not given up on you. Regardless of your fear, God has not given up on you. Regardless of insecurity, God has not given up on you. Regardless of your sins, God has not forgiven or given up on you. Regardless of anything that you've done, I'm here to tell you unequivocally, stop hanging your head down. God has not given up on you. And the same is true with the disciples. And, and, and God was not through with them yet. Because in addition to all that they had done with Jesus, God still had a mission for them. So we look at our text again, and now we're looking at, uh, we're looking at um, verse 10. Jesus says to the women, go and tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. So now we jump down to verse 16. And when we pick up in verse 16, in 10, remember the disciples told the women, go to Gal uh, the women told the disciples, go to Galilee. Now in the verses in between that, it's a great story. Read it when you get home because it talks about how the guards, I believe the ones that fainted, were scared about what would happen to them. And so they made up a whole lie and said, you can't really tell people what Jesus did. Jesus, you got to tell them that the body was stolen because you can't tell them what really happened. Because if you told them what really happened, the world would be in an uproar. And I'm not here to preach that part today, but I do have to say this. Imagine what the world would be like if people really believed in Jesus. Imagine what the world would be like with, in, in, instead of trying to peddle Bibles for money. Come on, somebody. People would actually get up and read the word of God and see what Jesus did for them. Imagine what the world would be like if we didn't just talk about Jesus, but we actually believed in Jesus. But I digress. The, 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 the women told the disciples to go to Galilee, to the place where Jesus um, would, would find them. And the Bible said the disciples leave, going to the place where Jesus told them to go. They see Jesus there. And the Bible said, even in the midst of that, some worshiped him and some doubted him. I'm here to tell you today, don't worry about what other people are doing in church. You just do what you do in church. It's not my job to determine the validity of your worship in church. It's my job to let you know what I'm here to do. So I'm not here trying to figure out who going to show up next week or who ain't going to show up next week or who going to show up next month. That ain't my job. My job today is to simply say what we used to say in church a long time ago and still rings true today. I don't know what you came to do, but I came today to celebrate. I came to lift the name of Jesus. I came to worship my God. I came today simply because my Lord saw fit to save my dying soul. I came here today. You do what you want to do. I ain't worried about you today. I came to praise the Lord. So Jesus said to them, even in the midst of the doubters, let me tell you something. A doubter ain't never stopped Jesus from doing what Jesus had to do. A doubter has never stopped Jesus from pressing forward with the word of God. So Jesus was able to overlook those that doubted him and speak to those who believed in him and said, I'm here to tell you, I've been given all authority and by God in my hands and I'm sending you out now to do my father's will. Stop looking around at the people that are doubting you. Stop being worried about the people that are standing in your way. Stop worrying about those that might be hating on you. Because let me tell you something, if you ain't got no haters in your life, you ain't ain't doing nothing worth hating but if you got a hater or two in your life you ought to celebrate right now because you're doing something worthy of somebody being mad about and God is still going to do what God has to do he, he sends the disciples out 
and, and through it all, he says, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. Just like the women, we see the disciples had a mission. And, and, and in the midst of their hiding and in the midst of their fear, they came out of that to fulfill their mission. And, and their mission began with them going where Jesus told them to go. But like the women, their mission had obstacles. In order to go where Jesus told them to go, they had to leave the safety and the comfort of their hiding place. They had to go out and face opposition, even facing people that wanted to kill them, and some of them did die, wanting to kill them same way they killed Jesus. And, and they had to overcome the fact that even though they were traveling together as a group, there were some that believed and some that did not believe. But just like the women who had to overcome the obstacle of the guards and the obstacle of the stone, these disciples who overcame the obstacle of fear and the obstacle of opposition and the obstacle of doubt still went out to see Jesus for themselves. And they accomplished their mission by meeting Jesus where Jesus told them to go. And, and Jesus said, now that you've met me here, I'm going to give you something to leave with. See, remember we talked about the women earlier today and, and, and we talked about uh, the women a little bit ago and how they were able to tell the disciples where to go to meet Jesus. So the women were, were specifically to tell that group where they could meet Jesus. And then that group was, was tasked by Jesus to go out and tell the world where they could meet Jesus. And Jesus said to them, now I need to tell you what to do. You got to leave this place, but, but you got to leave this place talking about what I've taught you. Don't, he said, don't even leave this place. And it's, it's interesting. As much as Jesus had done, Jesus didn't tell the disciples, leave this place and tell the people what I look like. He didn't say, leave this place and tell the people how good I look. He didn't say, leave this place and tell the people how strong I am. He didn't say, tell the people. He simply said, leave this place and go and teach them everything I've taught you and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you to the ends of the age. So if you wonder why you got up to come to church this morning, and we look great on Easter. Don't we look great on Easter? Matter of fact, problem with Easter is some of us uh, ain't got no money in our pocket today because we're wearing our money on the outside. Come on, somebody. Got new Easter shoes, new Easter suits, new Easter this. And that's great. That's well and good. Not here to bother you about that today. But I'm here to tell you, it's not our responsibility to come here today for a fashion show. It's not our responsibility today to come here and catch up with friends we haven't seen in a while. It's not our responsibility today to come out and to report back to somebody else yeah child ain't nobody gonna be in church this morning oh wait a minute it was a couple people in church this morning oh wait a minute church was packed this morning that's all well and good it's your job to go and talk about Jesus it's your job to leave here today I don't want to hear a single person say a thing about what Reverend Cousin had on about what the robe looked like about what the choir sounded like all oh, that's well and good I want you to go out and tell them what you know about Jesus I want you to flood the streets of Woodstock and the streets of the greater Atlanta area I want you to tell them what you know about Jesus I want you to tell them how Jesus blessed you I want you to tell them how Jesus saved you I want you to tell them how God reached down from time and space and came to save some people who acted like they didn't care anything about God. Don't talk about the service. Talk about what Jesus has done for you. When you leave this place, go and make disciples of all nations. Not just black folk, but all nations. Not just white folk, but all nations. Not just Americans, but all nations. Not just those who come from border countries we like, but don't come from border countries we don't like, all nations. Go out and tell everybody you know about the goodness of God. Your mission today is to talk about Jesus to everybody who will listen. Because that's the mission of the disciples. So, so the mission of the women we got, the mission of the disciples we got, and now we're looking at the, 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 the most important mission of all, that's the mission of Jesus. The women, um, they, they accomplished their mission by finding him and sharing his message and, and, and where to meet with the disciples. The disciples accomplished their mission by going out and, and even in spite of the fear and, and, and the doubt and the difficulty, they found Jesus where Jesus told them to go and they shared God's word with the world. And now we come to the most important mission of all because the mission of the women and the mission of the disciples wouldn't even be possible today without the mission of Jesus. 
we would not even be possible today without the mission of Jesus. None of us would be here today. The generations who came before us would not have existed. The generations that shall follow us would not exist, simply if not for Jesus and his mission. And as we celebrate accomplished missions today of the women and the disciples, we can't overlook the accomplished mission of Jesus. So we look at our text one last time. If we could bring up verse five. The, the, the mission of Jesus is found in, in that fifth and sixth verse, I believe, of this 28th uh, chapter of Matthew. So the angel's talking to the women, and, and we go back now, and the angel spoke to the women and says, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Now let's look at verse six. He said, but he's not here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. See where his body is lying. He's not here. He's not here. He rose from the dead just as he said would happen. And, and basically, Jesus' mission is accomplished because Jesus did everything he promised to do. If, if we look in, in the word of God and you want to see what Jesus' mission was, in the same gospel of Matthew, back to the 16th chapter, Jesus told the disciples, and he was always telling the disciples, he said, look, I got to go to Jerusalem. I got to go there, and I'm going to go there on, on a Sunday where I'm celebrated. I'm going to go there on a Sunday where everybody lifts my name. I'm going to go there on a Sunday where they lay down palms and wave palms, and I'm going to ride in on a donkey. I'm going to go in, and everybody's going to shout Hosanna, and I'm going to go there on that Sunday. But then, somehow during that week, I'm, I'm going to be given over to the hands of sinful men and, and religious leaders and leading priests. I'm going to be given over to people who ought to be looked upon with, uh, with, with respect and admiration. I'm, I'm going to be given over to people who ought to be taking care of me, and I'm going to be given over to them for them to kill me. And, and Jesus said, I'm going to be killed in a horrible and unfair and tragic death. But he told them, but, but I'm going to get up on that third day. And Jesus outlined his mission to the disciples. And we're here today celebrating Jesus' mission. But Jesus' mission was not without its own set of obstacles. Because Jesus told them he would go to Jerusalem. And even though he entered in great fanfare, he was delivered to the hands of sinful men and religious leaders. And he promised to rise. Jesus told them he would be treated unfairly. Uh, even placed between two criminals to die on a cross, but still he would rise. He told them that he would be mocked, beaten, crucified, that he would have a crown of thorns placed on his head, that, that drops of blood and sweat and, and tears would all fall from his face, that he would be whipped and beaten in a manner where his body would be unrecognizable. But he said, I'm still going to rise. He told them that he wouldn't even have the ability to have his own tomb. He would have to have a borrowed tomb. And the fact that that borrowed tomb would, would have to be given to him, even uh, to the fact that the cross that he was placed upon would have to be carried up the hill by somebody else, not him. But he said, but I'm still going to rise. He said, I'm going to die on that Friday, but I promise you I'm still going to rise on that Sunday. And it looked as though the mission of Jesus would go unaccomplished. Imagine how it looked to the disciples when Jesus was arrested by the sinful men. Matter of fact, they asked Peter, do you know this man? And the Bible says that three times Peter denied this man. I, remember, I got some Peter in me every now and again. I don't do what I'm supposed to do. He said, do you know this man? He said, no, I don't know him. Second time, he said, do you know this man? He said, I'm telling you, I don't know him. Third time, he said, Peter, you look like this man. Peter said, if you don't get uh, away from me, you're getting on my last nerve. You bother me. I don't know this man. And the Bible said, then the cock crowed. When Jesus was given over to those sinful men, the mission looked like it was not going to be accomplished. Jesus was taken before Pilate and Pilate said, I don't see anything this man has done. He said, matter of fact, I'll give you the option. You can even get Barabbas or you can get that man. And the people, being how people are, were so fickle. They said, we'll take Barabbas. You go crucify that Jesus. When Pilate washed his hands, it looked like the mission was done. When Jesus was placed on that cross to die between two criminals and the people were laughing at him. And one of the criminals said, if you really are the son of God, you need to get up off this cross and save us and save yourself. While the other criminal said, you know what, you need to shut your mouth. Today, I want to be with you in paradise. And Jesus said, your wish shall be granted. When Jesus was on that cross, you don't hear about a disciple being around the cross 
when Jesus was on the cross because they were hiding from the cross as Jesus was on the cross because they believed that somehow maybe the mission would not be accomplished. Jesus uttered seven last words and the last of those seven words that Jesus uttered, Jesus says after saying it is finished, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I'm giving everything I got to you, God. I ain't got nothing left to get. He hung his head on that cross. When he died on that cross, it looked like the mission would not be accomplished. Well, when they had to put him in a borrowed tomb that day, and, and the people saw Jesus die. I can imagine those people who didn't believe the mission was accomplished saying, what y'all got to say about Jesus now? Uh, all day Friday, he ain't nothing happened. What y'all got to say about Jesus now? Saturday morning, I can imagine them saying, he still ain't got up. What you got to say about Jesus now? Saturday afternoon, uh, uh, they, they were saying, what y'all got to say about Jesus now? Saturday night, they were saying, this man made false promises to you. This man told you he was going to do stuff he didn't do. Sometimes in your life, you're going to have people that will tell you God's not going to do for you the very thing that God said God would do for you. And whenever you run across somebody like that, I want you to remember this. It didn't matter what happened on Friday. It didn't matter what happened on Saturday morning. It didn't matter what happened on Saturday afternoon. It didn't matter what happened on Saturday evening. Because early, early, early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up just like he said he would. Somebody ought to shout right now because everything God promises to do, God will do. God always accomplishes God's missions. Come on, let's stand. On that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands so that he might distribute that power to us. And I don't know what you're going through today or what you're dealing with today, but I want you to know, don't give up on your mission. What God has called you to do, don't give up on your mission. When obstacles get placed in your way, don't give up on your mission. When people get in your way and doubt and say that God's not going to do it for you, don't give up on your mission. Because to me, one of the overlooked parts about Easter is this. It's not so much that Jesus got up and he did get up. But it's the fact he told you he was going to get up before it happened. As, as we're starting baseball season, one of the greatest baseball legends in folklore is Babe Ruth calling his home run. Um, not really, I'm not much of a Babe Ruth fan like that. But Babe Ruth called his home run. They say, I wasn't alive to see it, but they say that at the plate, Babe Ruth took the bat and, and, and pointed to the outfield. And after he pointed to the outfield, he hit the pitch, hit a home run. It wouldn't have been anything for Babe Ruth to hit a home run, because people knew Babe Ruth as somebody who had power, so he could hit a home run. It wasn't so much hitting a home run. It was the fact he told you he was going to do it before he did it. Jesus not only rose, with all power in his hands. But he told you he was gonna do it before he did it and then did what he said he would do. Don't ever doubt what God has for you with your life. Don't ever doubt the mission that God has for you. And right now you, you, you may be saying, well, pastor, you don't know my situation. You don't know my circumstance. You don't know my story and I don't, but I know my Jesus. And I know that no matter what he promised to you, if he said he was going to do it, he's going to do it. So I have three things for you today. And you can go and enjoy brunch, enjoy hunting Easter eggs, enjoy looking for little chocolate bunnies in baskets, have a marvelous time. But just know that ain't your mission. Your mission is to leave here. Make disciples of all nations 
baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them what Jesus taught us and to know that Jesus is going to do everything he said he would do. So if you're one who doesn't have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's what salvation is about. That's what today is about. Jesus comes to save us all. He comes to bring life and bring life everlasting and abundantly. And in order to be saved, it's not a hard formula or a difficult formula to be saved. All you have to do to be saved is confess with your mouth and then believe in your heart. So you got to not just talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Say it with your mouth, believe it in your heart that Jesus died. And as we preached about today, rose again, like he said he would, with all power in his hands for you and you shall be saved. So if you're one who desires salvation, you can come down right now. You can see us after church. If you're watching us online, you can reach out to us and let us know. You don't even really need me for this part. You don't need me. You don't need anybody for this part. All you need to do is say to yourself, you can pray it, you can say it however you want. But say, Lord, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that no matter what I've done, no matter the mistakes I've made, no matter how much I've messed up, I know you died to save me. I'm embracing and receiving your salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Secondly, if you're one who does not have a church home, a place where you can go, a place where you can um, join the fellowship of believers and bear witness to the manifestation of God every day and bear witness to the promises of Jesus being fulfilled in lives right in front of you, we would love to have you here at Allen Temple. Um, we are blessed now that for the most part, we're picking back up. Things are picking back up. Persons are coming back out. But there may still be some that say, well, Pastor, I just don't feel it's safe anymore. And I don't feel it's safe anymore. And that's up to you. But at this point, you have to ask yourself the question. I'm, I'm saying it might not be safe to come to church. But how safe is it really to stay away? Let me say that one more time. It might not be that safe in your mind to come to church, but it's a whole lot less safe to stay away from church. We'd love to have you be a part of what God is doing here at Allen Temple. All you have to do, you can come down right now, meet us in the middle. One of our ministerial staff will meet you. Uh, we'll take it back to the old days. Our, our stewardesses will come out and meet you and greet you right where you are. But if you're one who's looking for a church home, we'd love to have you come down and be a part of what God is doing here at Allen Temple. You can talk to us after service. You can see us now. You can reach out to us however you so desire. We would love, love, love to have you. And lastly, if there's anyone who desires a word of prayer today, and you just say, I, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but I need a little bit more help on accomplishing my mission. Just right where you are, if, if you feel comfortable. And um, this is for you, Reverend Tammy. Grab the hand of the person next to you. If, if you feel comfortable. Reverend Tammy told me, she said, I'm up there with you by myself every Sunday. You're up there preaching. I ain't got nobody's hand to grab. So today she got Reverend Sandy's hand to grab. Grab the pen of the person next to you if you feel comfortable. As we all look together to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for this time you've given us. On this Easter Sunday morning, we pray, Lord, that through your word, someone understands more about you, about their mission, and about the fact that you accomplish every mission that you ever undertake. We ask, Lord, that through this word, lives would be changed through this word that persons would come to know you better for themselves through this word that they wouldn't even remember who Joseph cousin was because Joseph cousin doesn't matter but they would remember who Jesus Christ was because Jesus Christ is all that matters and that we would go out and share with the world and let them know that we serve a God who never fails to accomplish any mission God did it with the women God did it with the disciples, and God certainly did it with Jesus. And for that, we are thankful, for that, we are grateful. And for that, we thank you for rising early on that Sunday morning with all power in your hands. And we shall forever be giving you the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance unto you, giving you his peace now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen.